Welcome back. So far, we have learned about two built-in modules, the path module and the events module. Now, before we proceed with the remaining three, we need to take another detour. This time, we are going to learn about character sets, encoding, streams and buffers, and finally, a little about asynchronous JavaScript. In this particular video, our focus will only be on character sets and encoding. To understand what is a character set, let's first understand what is binary data. Now computers store and represent data in binary format, which is a collection of zeros and ones. On the right, you have a list of the first 10 numbers represented in binary. Here, each zero or one is called a binary digit or bit for short. To work with a piece of data, a computer needs to convert the data into its binary representation. For example, to store the number 4, a computer needs to convert 4 to 100. But the question is, how does a computer know to perform the conversion? Well, it is just simple mathematics where we rely on base 2 numeric system. 100 can be represented as 2 power 0 multiplied by 0 plus 2 power 1 multiplied by 0 plus 2 power 2 multiplied by 1. This gives us 4 plus 0 plus 0 which is 4. Pretty simple as you can see. But you have to keep in mind, numbers are not the only data type we work with. Strings are something we come across quite often. So how will a computer represent a character in binary format? For example, the letter V. How does the computer convert V to binary? Well, as it turns out, computers will first convert the character to a number, then convert that number to its binary representation. So for the character or string V, computers will first convert V to a number that represents V. In the browser, in the DevTools console, if I type the character v dot character code at followed by parentheses, we see the number 86. This is the numeric representation of the character v. It is also called character code. But again, how does a computer know what number will represent each character? In our case, how does it know v should be represented as 86. Well, that question brings us to the second topic in this video, which is character sets. Character sets are predefined lists of characters represented by numbers. We have different character sets we can use, but the two most popular ones are Unicode and ASCII. What we have just seen in the browser is Unicode. Unicode character set dictates that 86 should represent character V. If you head over to unicodetable.com, you can see characters and their numeric representation. If I click on uppercase V, we see 86, which is what the browser returned as well. Hopefully, this gives you a better idea of how computers represent characters in numbers. Now that we have characters as numbers, you may think the computer can work with these numbers by converting them to binary. Well, that is only partially true. Which brings us to the third topic in this video, which is character encoding. Character encoding dictates how to represent a number in a character set as binary data before it can be stored in a computer. More specifically, it dictates how many bits to use to represent a number. One such example of a character encoding system is UTF-8. UTF-8 states that characters should be encoded in bytes. Now a byte is a set of 8 bits. So 8 ones or zeros should be used to represent the code of any character in binary. If we go back to our binary representation of the number 4, it was 100. 
With UTF-8 encoding, computer adds five zeros to the left to make it a byte. So four is represented as five zeros, one double zero. On similar lines, V is represented as 86, which in turn is represented as 01010110. One byte or eight bits. And this is how computers store strings or characters in binary format. Now you should know similar guidelines also exist on how images and videos should be encoded and stored in binary format. But that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. I hope it is now clear as to what is binary data, what is a character set, and what is character encoding. With this knowledge, let's now proceed to the next video where we will learn about streams and buffers. I'll see you in the next one.